discussion started already, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello, Fabio. Long time no see. Hello, Istvan. Hello, Maria. Uh, Snežana. So we are all, we are, uh, and uh, Dragan, we are all here. Um, just, I would uh, just say a few uh, starting words to just reset the audience to the, to the fact that this panel is about to start. So we have a very ex uh, exciting topic in front of us. So um, this is a topic that uh, our region is particularly in interested in because we are about to enter the installments of 5G technology and also the IoT in the, in the background is, is, is also very challenging, interesting and somehow intertwined with this. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to listening to our great speaker roster here. Uh, our moderator is Professor Ishtam Pop. So he's um, uh, one of the leaders of Oblo Living Technology that the pioneers the IoT here in, in, in Novi Sad, in Serbia, and in, in the Balkans, I would, I would say, in general. So he's the great, the great host for this panel. So Ishtam, please, please do take over. OK, thank you, Milan. Uh, first of all, I would thank everyone participating in this panel. Uh, it's a great opportunity and an honor for me to be in the panel with you. Some of you I haven't seen for a really long time. So I, I'm glad we managed to, to at least spend some time after you know working for some years together. Uh, so I would propose just shortly to uh, introduce, oh, actually, I will not introduce you. I will let uh, you to introduce yourself briefly, uh, but I will uh, let the, the uh, participants know who will hear uh, today and to understand slightly our position and therefore our view on, on things. Uh, so let's start uh, with ladies. It's not, so uh, Snežana Rimac Drlje comes from uh, University Osijek. Uh, Professor Marija Antic uh, is coming from University of Novi Sad. Then I think currently Dragan is farthest in U US. So uh, he's uh, in front of Bell Labs. He's also a professor. Uh, Fabio Pignoli, our friend, PhD coming from Signify Netherlands, and yeah, as Milan said, myself coming from Oblo Living Serbia. So that was a, I would say a brief uh, introduction. Maybe we can uh, go in the same uh, uh, sequence. So I would ask then Snežana Rimac, professor, to introduce herself. Uh, thank you, Ishtan. Uh, I'm coming from Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Information Technology uh, in Osijek uh, from Department of Communications. And uh, my scientific and uh, uh, scientific area of my researches are in the field of, uh, on one side, on uh, mobile technologies, but more on propagation and uh, measurement of electromagnetic magnetic fields uh, due to uh, impact uh, of electromagnetic fields, uh, exposure um, and influence of human health that is relevant for today's uh, uh, topic. Uh, but also I do research on uh, video uh, co communications, video transmissions, uh, uh, video quality, and video quality. Okay, thank you. Uh, Maria. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Maria Antic. Uh, I come from the Faculty of Technical Sciences in the University of Novi Sad, Serbia. I uh, actually graduated from Belgrade University with a degree in telecommunications, and I'm interested, my research interest is in the field of networking protocols and uh, IoT applications. And I also have some of the industrial experience from RTRK Institute to Microsoft Development Center, Serbia, and so on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dragan? 
Okay, my hometown is Navi Sad. I graduated from the University of Navi Sad, but my grad school I did in the US, where I spent a good portion of my professional career. And um, I'm teaching at the University of Navi Sad too, but most of my professional work related to 5G and guess what, these days even 6G has been related to, to Bell Labs. Uh, at least for the last 10 years. And I'll try to convey some, some aspects, perspectives uh, from, from that angle. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, Fabio. It, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Fabio Vignoli. I'm, I'm from Italy originally. I lived in the Netherlands uh, since 2000 and then the United States, uh, where I took uh, responsibility for um, the R&D departments for Signify. Signify is uh, the new name uh, for, uh, for Philips Lighting. Most of you know, mm -hmm. make um, um, many, many uh, different uh, systems and applications in the area of, uh, of lighting for road and streets, for uh, inter um, hospitality, uh, for uh, retail, for offices and industry. And, uh, um, Recently, well, recently, a few years ago, I moved my focus of attention to cybersecurity, and it's uh, where I and, and and right now I'm the head of the uh, product security for for the digital solutions division. The company uh, is divided in two parts. One of them is the um, professional solutions, where we make uh, really the the bulk of uh, of the revenues for the company. I'm very, very happy to be here with you to talk about this. I will probably bring a different perspective as I'm not in academia anymore. So, well, I will, I'm, I'm sure I will enjoy and I hope you all will enjoy the conversation. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so actually, I think this will for sure give value to cover this topic from various angles. So I think today we will hear uh some maybe technology biased views that will be mine for sure security health standards future and so on so i i didn't introduce myself so i'm i will today be i will choose to be in front of obla living and and uh, consider the questions from the uh business and technology point of view so uh, I'm really, I'd say, uh, always attracted by different technologies. And I would say uh, my view on things is quite uh, similar, if you know this uh, hype cycle by Gartner. You know, at, when, when a technology appears, you know, there is a huge peak in, in interest. There is a hype being created and then you know when, when uh, we realize the technology will not solve everything there is a drop and later on some stabilization phase comes so my question to you would be where do you see iot not necessarily connected to 5g today but on that hype cycle where you see uh iot's today Maybe, maybe, maybe Maria can start with. Well, yes. Uh, in general, you know, when we start talking about new technologies, yes, there is always this hype, and IoT is, I'd say, uh, on its peak, probably somewhere with this hype currently. Uh, it's been in the development for the last decade or so, or or. It, it's been climbing and uh, the interest for IT technology have, has been climbing. And uh, uh, the application started first with uh, use cases such as fitness trackers. We witnessed, for example, the huge amount of uh, development in that area a couple of years ago. Now we uh, see smart home solutions emerging and becoming more popular and more affordable for the end users. Uh, and recently with COVID, 
2019, we've witnessed the development of different smart healthcare, healthcare and monitoring applications, as well as content uh, tracking applications. So uh, different use cases are developed, consumer oriented, both uh, infrastructure oriented, such as smart parking, uh, traffic monitoring, traffic lights control and so on, and also fleet management in public transport. Uh, there are different solutions development. We still don't have the uh, convergence of standards necessarily. So uh, most of these solutions, uh, some of them don't gain, some of them win on the market share, the others don't win on the market share, the others have problems reaching uh, larger numbers of users and have only a short uh, life cycle. So, uh, in general, we are in this phase where uh, the adoption is growing, but uh, we definitely need uh, the better convergence of standards, I think, and uh, the, the way to collaborate between different uh, IoT solutions that are available on the market and make it more approachable to the user. And uh, we're also, uh, we can also see that a lot of the effort is put into uh, building uh, the solutions to be even smarter, not just to be based on the communication, but also to collect data and to develop different advanced scenarios uh, regarding data processing and uh, building, you know, user behavior patterns finding user behavior patterns, building uh, the customized solution oriented towards the users, adaptable ones, and so on. Uh, all of these issues are, are yet to be tackled from the security perspective, basically, and uh, we are still to witness uh, the development of uh, different features in this area. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fabio, uh, what would you say yeah. Uh, about smart cities. Yeah, I think. Maybe. I mean, talking, you know, a little piggyback on what what um, uh, Maria was saying. I, I I'm not sure I completely agree that that we are at the peak. I think we are past. Um, at least spe specifically for some of the technology that 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 we develop. I'm not saying that is for every technology. I mean, for IoT is is very broad. You can you can define it as very broad. Uh, I think, uh, from 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 my perspective, I think we we already reached a situation in which some of the uh, applications that that use IoT are very much very much alive, very much present, and 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 we see we see that we sell it. From a smart cities perspective, um, yes, well, the smart cities again is is very broad. You can you can you can put everything in there in there. But, but when, when we look at it from, from a lighting perspective, um, in fact, we started developing devices which were connected to GPS and would, uh, would connect to, uh, to the internet already when uh, the, the 2G standards was developed. That was 2008, 2009. So, and, it, and we've been selling this already for 12 years. Um, they're still over now. We, we're moving from, from 2G to to, to 4G in some of this technology, 2G is uh, is uh, is definitely being phased out. So, so I think I think we are we are closer to be for certain part of technologies. We're closer to be at the uh, uh, at the plateau uh, that 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 you mentioned that the, the last part of the Gartner mm -hmm. uh, cycle, right? The plateau of productivity. So, yeah, um, it, it's perhaps a different a different perspective. For a, from a consumer perspective, yes, uh, I might I might agree. I mean, there is there is still a lot of hype. From a, a professional perspective, where where I'm, I'm I'm really focusing, I think there are uh, applications that are very much alive and very much in use today. Hmm. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, maybe to ask then uh, Snežana about IoT and and. Uh, smart living so do you see that as a natural fit or or you see that there are some hurdles or some barriers that need to be resolved in order to people accept iot in their lives 
Uh, well, I can comment that in uh, by the uh, by the side of uh, electromagnetic compatibility and uh, about uh, health issues. Uh, lots of lots of uh, devices, uh, which is in fact transmitters, which radiated the, the power in different ranges. Um, but also uh, uh, working in parallel with all the existing uh, mobile technologies and, in fact, new 5G technologies, uh, technology uh, or networks uh, that produce some concern uh, from public uh, about negative impact on human health. So. Uh, in fact, lots of devices around us uh, for non-technical person uh, sometimes is not uh, welcome uh, because of that concern, um, especially for smart living. Um, so I think that we need to work a little bit more in that direction to, to prepare public for uh, infecting in this uh, in these areas uh, to prepare them to prepare people to to use lots of uh, smart devices in houses it's interesting that at least for me you know being this smart home business that people never doubt about you know the mobile phone who is i would say quite near to them in their pocket in their hands and uh, at some point, you know, this SAR index and all those things that were quite interesting. Everybody was looking at that, that that was like maybe 15 years ago. But as of today, I'm not sure if anybody cares about uh, that. But on the other hand, you know, putting some uh, smart sensors that uh, are having or using much less power than uh, the mobile phone, People are questioning that. What is the reason? Did you saw any signs or indications why people are doing that? Uh, on the first place, I think that it's um, ignorance. Uh, they don't know enough about that uh, devices and uh, do not know enough about uh, all efforts uh, which uh, scientific um, uh, science, science scientists uh, take to to get answers on on questions uh, about uh, influence of radio uh, frequencies radio frequency signals on human health. Uh, very we can very often hear that uh, we don't know anything about influence of high frequencies or millimeter wave signals on human health but in fact there's uh, a huge uh, number of of uh, researches and studies about uh, impact of different kind of emissions but of course we need to to do uh, more progress in that in that uh, area in fact uh, uh, international uh, standardization organization which deal with uh, recommendation of uh, limits for for uh, fields for field strengths and other quantities um, IEEE and ICNR uh, IRP IEEE in uh, 2019 and uh, ICNR IRP in last year published um, updated recommendations especially uh, focused on that part of, uh, uh, of frequency uh, above uh, 6 uh, gigahertz. Um, taking in mind uh, the, the, the newest, newest um, findings in that field. Um, related to the, to the general public, uh, the problem is that of, uh, social, of social networks and some uh, strange, strange uh, theories uh, which prevail today for some group of people. So uh, I think that it's not, not enough um, 
scientific voices in in media and public domain to to uh, to explain better what's happened especially related to the low low level of um, emissions of IoT devices for example yeah i i will use this opportunity to tell you uh, actually it's not a joke it, it, it's a real real event uh, how how significantly uh, are the minds even of young people my kids influenced so when we got the vaccine you know when i arrived home my son asked me he's like 13 years old like how was it no actually he asked me how is it and i told him okay i, I just felt a bit uh and, and and it wasn't bad and he explained no 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 i meant how do you receive 5g now is it better <laughs> <laughs> much better, <laughs> much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, you know, I, and actually, to be honest, I, I see really improvements in, in the transmission speeds. Here uh, we go. Very good. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, actually, uh, I, I will just go back to the uh, uh, question of where, where we are at the height uh, cycle. I think we are somewhere in between, you know, in this uh, slight disappointment and, and ramping up because I still see <clears throat> sorry a lot of uh, ideas a lot of trials and errors you know nobody has the killer app today uh, but there are many things that can be sold or improved with IoT so I think that we are at the beginning of the plateau and backed up with right technologies it will for sure uh, grow but uh, during the discussion, we always implied that IoT is uh, connected to wireless. So, Dragon, I know you will defend your view. Uh, is it wireless connectivity a must for IoT? Uh, thanks a lot. Actually, I would be highlighting one very healthy uh, domain where IoT really is flourishing and making a huge difference. And Fabio said IoT, it's very broad notion and technologies associated. And I'm in particular thinking about industrial IoT. So I'm not sure about the peak or plateau, but I think it started a couple of years back and it will be only accelerating when it comes to usage of IoT in industrial enterprise settings. And I have a very healthy examples associated with mining sites, large harbor complexes, factories, and, and even increasing usage in, in agricultural type of uh, industrial situations. And industrial IoT, it's quite broad. It could be very short packets transmitted every few minutes, alarms every few days, or it could be truly robot drone generated video and then uploaded in close to real time to industrial controller. Further on, what's happening industrial IoT, it's coupling very nicely with on-prem, on-premise cloud processing. Again, industrial controller managing what's happening in a harbor or even data center type of uh, cloud processing. So industrial IoT, it's nicely enabled or cross-connected with uh, uh, machine learning, big data, deep neural networks, um, using the large amount of data that industrial sensors video, LIDAR, radar sources could be providing. And I can give you a couple of very healthy, useful examples, non-destructive testing of ships, uh, uh, remote operation of cranes, so on and so forth. Uh, when it comes to connectivity, I think many of those applications could be done using best effort Wi-Fi could be done even using 2G, 
GPR instant technology, but certain applications do require 5G and possibly even 6G in the future. Uh, whether those applications represent 5%, 10%, 30% of the application space in industrial settings, it's a little bit hard for me to tell. But to repeat myself, to a great degree, older technologies do it. And for some smaller percentages, we do need 5G. And the last one, I think 5G will be happening anyhow. In the US in particular, actually 3G is getting shut down. They're, they're literally turning off 3G carriers and they're reactivating as 5G wireless carriers. So as the replacement of 3G, 4G equipment happens, they will not go back to 3G, 4G. 5G will be deployed. So what's ahead of us, it's truly 5G for the good or bad reasons. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if, uh, sorry, I forgot to ask if you need the slides or it's too late for that. We may get back to it. I'll, I'll ask if, if the, the, the discussion mm -hmm. takes us in okay. that direction. Okay? Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so uh, based on what you have said, uh, so I I'm wondering now, you you know uh, whether you know this five G is it a push, a techn technology pushed onto us, or it's really needed by the use cases of today or the use cases tomorrow? I I think it's by and large it's pushed. And it's pushed by the big machinery of incumbents, the likes of Nokia, Ericsson, Huawei, the likes of Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone uh, in the United States, AT&T, NTT Docomo in Japan. So by and large, it's kind of a evolution arms race where those guys are on the top. However, once the, the technology is introduced, once the economies of scale kick in and the price starts to drop, they do create opportunities for enabling new applications. So in my view, up to this point, or until maybe two years ago, I think it was pushed by those incumbents, though it may end up and is turning up to be useful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I would just note one example. Uh, three years ago, we started development of an edge device which would connect uh, data from the sensors and send it to the cloud for further processing. So at the time, uh, the requirement was that device to operate on batteries for five years. And in order to achieve that, uh, NB-IoT was supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. And actually, at, at the customer side, there was a great hype about, you know, NB-IoT, it's a new technology. The chip vendor was promoting it heavily. And, you know, when we did the evaluation, at the time, NB-IoT wasn't available on the majority of target markets. The edge device was intended to be used. So the, so the, the carriers never got activated the uh, wireless uh, physical carriers by the likes of Vodafone never got activated and you can have chips, but there is nothing to connect through. Mm -hmm. And the reason yeah. why it was the case by and large, because the service providers, again, like the likes of Vodafone could not make a clear business case for deploying the infrastructure equipment and activating those spectrum carriers. Well, that depends very much. Uh, uh, sorry, if I, if I want to add here, that depends very much on the markets. Some markets do have, and 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 markets, for instance, in China develops differently than the markets in the U.S. Yeah. So, for certain You're things, right. it depends you know, on. It depends to a great degree on as well what government does and whether there is some sort of incentives or regulations. Uh, um, making those kind of deployments more suitable. But yeah, it's not a, a homogeneous situation. You're right, right. Bob. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
No, no, absolutely. We, and that's one of one of the issues we have uh, in developing some some of our nodes for our in, interact city applications. Basically, management of uh, uh, luminaires for road and street is that each market we go, each market we need to have a different technology in there. So we need to build <laughs> one for each. Uh, if you go Indonesia, it's one type. If you go South America, it's a different one. We are a global company, so we need to address all of this. Yeah, there isn't really a, a single thing. I mean, 2G was a little easier, although there were differences there too. But uh, these days, it's going all over the place. Yeah, and uh, 2G is phasing out. I think almost everywhere. Dragon, is that correct? Actually, what's happening, based on my experience, 3G is getting shut down, while 2G for the market, I mean, we're off with GPRS. Uh, will still be on because it's providing still the best coverage and in rural remote sites uh, 2G GPRS GSM it's still the king so we may see definitely and we're seeing 3G being shut down maybe in the future 4G migrated to 5G 2G it's still very resilient because of incredible coverage uh, achieved over the decades it's interesting thing. Yeah, I read somewhere that NB-IoT is uh, heavily developing in China, but in Europe that LTEM is is uh, I would say uh, it's the the likely winner. Yeah. Uh, at the time we were developing this edge device, LTEM was also quite uh, far away, so we selected uh 3g 4g uh uh module to cover europe and uh, most of asia and as fabio said uh, we had to use a different one and actually to have two products for the american uh market and that makes our lives much more difficult also both for because of development and certification and all the uh regulations so uh, will be there any, uh, will 5G bring any consolidation of uh, operation frequency standards across the world? I, I think it's presenting operators with even more options. Uh, for example, Snezhena mentioned uh, millimeter wave versus conventional bands. So even operators within one country are deciding to deploy just below six gigahertz carriers while some other operators are highlighting the usage of millimeter wave. So I think unfortunately with 5G, we uh, the set of technology options, it's only growing and we may see more of what Fabio has described. Um, Fragmentation. Yes, fragmentation, operator by operator, country by country, even introduction of what's known as private industrial networks. This may be called all 5G, but has different bands, carrier frequencies, number of antennas, and particular features, like features, uh, uh, um, massive broadband, versus URLLC, ultra reliable low latency, versus machine type communications. So unfortunately, 5G is presenting operators with even larger set of options. And through business studies, very dynamic reasons uh, uh, for pro or for or against, they may decide to deploy different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. um... Yeah, so actually uh, selecting the right technology, even today, it's not that easy because you need to consider many factors. For example, one is one factor is the data, you know, just to calculate how much time uh, or how many times you're sending how much data and you need to fit into the bandwidth. You know, that's the outgoing uh, data. But on the other hand, you need to have some incoming data as well. Uh, the incoming data, according to my experience, is either configuration, 
or further upgrade. And in the case of NB-IoT, we were facing that issue that the distribution and uh, 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 doing the further upgrade through NB-IoT was impossible. And mm. in our life, it was proved that, you know, without firmware upgrade, you cannot guarantee either the sustainability of your system or any level of or, or sufficient level of resilience uh, against attacks or, or issues. So uh, I would say to, to have a future-proof solution, you need to have firmware upgrade. Uh, so in terms of security, um, the devices are growing. The number of them is like, you know, billions today. We are hearing a lot about the attacks. Uh, will 5G bring anything in that sense? Or maybe we should go one step back. So what's, what's uh, your view on... Uh, security of the uh, existing solution maybe to first ask fabio then maybe maria can also comment on so when, yeah that's that's a very you know a uh, full question for, for for many many hours but I'll, I'll try to keep it very short so when you look at security uh, you, you look at at the nonion right to so say you have to peel it in different layers and uh, the 5g part is actually when we really look at network security and 5G has as an advantage with respect to other technology in the past because it offers native uh, encryption. Um, but the, the standards and the encryption and I, I would do, I would say there is quite a, a high level of security in the network itself. So I wouldn't expect you know, big, big uh, uh, issues with respect to the security mm -hmm. network. However, you, you have to expand from the network itself to actually everything else, right? So from, from the network, you, you, you really have to look at how the, 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 the components and, and uh, that, that, that creates the network and manage the network are implemented. Then you'd have to look at the processes of, of security of a companies like I don't know, Ericsson, Nokia, or uh, Huawei, or any other um, companies that make those uh, network uh, components. And then you have to look at the, um, the way they are installed. And finally, you have to look at the way they are managed, right? At the end of the day, you end up having people to manage some things and people, you make mistakes and they are, um, they are the usually weak link. But then, but this is again on the infrastructure side of things. I think the most important part when you look at security is going on the device themselves and on the application that, run, that runs at the other side. So the network itself, it's, it's going to be kind of relatively safe, but the huge amount of companies that make devices and the huge amount of companies made applications for these devices, uh, there is where the, the weakness from a security perspective is. Devices can be hijacked, and then uh, if devices are, are powerful enough, they could, they could be used to do um, denial, uh, distributed denial of service attacks. They could be used to, to you know, between quotes, spy, uh, if uh, they have uh, cameras and microphones, uh, they could be used to be, you know, to to uh, to do things they are not supposed to be used to, and the application on on the back sides, uh, it, it's the big uh, the big aspects rel relatively to to privacy and uh, and data protection. The applications are still developed by people, so the the, the processes and 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 the way of working of the companies that develop the application. Um, we're talking about five to 10 major companies that develop devices, which are really large companies that can put a lot of effort in security uh, for, for the infrastructure side. And we talk, think about the millions of other companies that develop devices and applications, which sometimes are just 
mom and pop shops huh? where you have three employees that build an application. So security is, is, and I think that's where the weakest link is. Not on the network itself, not with 4G, 5G is even better, but the, the biggest security issue is with, uh, with the application and the devices at the end. Um, in the past, uh, sorry, Maria, <laughs> uh, just to, to share my thoughts. So in the past, we have seen even a lot of issues coming from other different devices, even from big or, or, or uh, more known brands, like I think it was dealing and uh, uh, there was issues residing in the Wi-Fi stack for years back. Yes. So even... Even if they invest uh, a lot of time to to test to improve the 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 strength in the solution, you know, I think the huge exposure of the devices makes possible to everybody to tamper with the device and find out some uh, security issues. No, it, 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 it's true. It's it's true. But remember that. The, the, the most of the attention on security, it's, uh, it's in the past 10 years, and there is a lot more attention up to, to security. And you, if you talk about Wi-Fi, the standards that have been developed much earlier than that. And the fact that things have been found, you know, absolutely, it, it's true. Um, the fact that it was the weakest link within the security of, um, of, of the internet uh, 10 years ago, I doubt that. I think the weakest link was uh, gener user generating password like uh, uh, with adding a capital P and uh, a, a one and an exclamation mark at the end. Yeah. yeah, that's for sure. So anyhow, I think even today, you know, uh, there is a, a quite huge database of most common usernames and password. And this is, you know, like an, an evergreen song. So it's it's a database of uh, great knowledge. So even today, I I'm getting uh, logs from my home router that external attacks, you know, trying different combinations of usernames and password. I think it's like admin and one, two, three, four, five, whatever. But you know, uh, such such a trials are, uh, I would say, every day. Well, you would so, be surprised how much, how many of these trials do succeed still. Yeah, I, I can also imagine that you know, if you do not have the sufficient technical knowledge, you are actually not not giving any or sufficient attention to to security as of today. Maria. Yes. Well, I do agree with uh, your point on uh, wireless technology kind of being. Uh, uh, easily uh, accessible to lots of users and maybe uh, interesting for them to try to hack. But I also do think that the main concern in the IoT domain currently comes from the actual applications and the way they handle data uh, and uh, not just the way they handle it and then the way they secure it, but also by the way they process it and uh, the, the smartness of the application they offer. And that's kind of one of the reasons that actually influences the adoption rate. Uh, people are afraid of both the, the, uh, radio, uh, of both the radio effects and uh, the contamination of, of uh, uh, the environment from 5G or other wireless technologies, but also they're afraid from uh, the strange behaviors of the applications or uh, things they perceive as the impact of their privacy. Uh, I don't remember uh, if, I don't know if you remember, there was this um, uh, TV show with Amazon Alexa uh, a couple of years ago where uh, basically, Alexa keeps listening to uh, the, to users all of the time and reacting to the uh, to the keyword Alexa and then uh, perform certain actions. And uh, there was this uh, TV show where uh, the girl was buying a dollhouse on, on the TV. And after the uh, 
that uh, talk finished, the uh, the speaker said something like, oh, she's so cute. She, uh, the way she said, Alexa ordered me a dollhouse. And at that moment, Alexa's all over the, uh, the US actually ordered dollhouses for uh, for their owners without uh, checking the voice or uh, without uh, uh, confirming in any way that they really wanted those products. So things like that uh, coming from the applications actually uh, influence the way people feel about the IoT and the way they adapt adopt the uh, uh, the applications. We uh, I think that. Sometimes we go uh, to the market with uh, the solutions that aren't really um, fully developed, you know, with, with this uh, quick pace of uh, user testing, basically, and user feedback, which is uh, expected by today's age, agile development, we end up with the applications that change quickly and that behave strangely sometimes, and that also the users off. Yeah, it's uh, the the question is may, uh, is it you know what's the worst case if you know that the device is compromised or if you don't? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it just depends on uh, how much you know what makes you afraid. You know, you may be afraid that your device is compromised. Somebody else is afraid of something else, uh, but they don't even think about the possibility of the device being compromised. Yeah, I'm totally okay with putting my life on Facebook, but I don't want anybody to read the temperature in my home. Yeah. So that, uh, only, only two weeks ago, again, I need to speak about the industrial aspects. Only two weeks ago, you may have heard of the whole pipeline being shut down uh, by a cyber criminals here in the United States. Something like 70 million people market was affected for five days. They could not restart the oil and gas pipeline uh, from the Gulf to the East Coast. And uh, they had to pay money. It was not about wireless security. It was about security applications, connectivity to the exchange that now industrial solutions are reverting by and large to what's known as physical security. In other words, they're disconnecting their subnetworks, physically disconnecting from the rest of the world. So I know that you're focusing on consumers, but security is a huge problem. I'm not a security expert. And, and I think it's uh, on a deeper level, it's not wireless, it's general security associated with applications and connectivity. And it could be dramatic. It's not just somebody uh, spying on me doing something at my home. It could be a big infrastructure uh, uh, at play right now. You know, you know why they blocked uh, the, the reason why people didn't have uh, gas in, in the United States because of the colonial pipeline is not because they blocked the system uh, of the colonial pipeline, as you mentioned. So those were older, so they were manually you know, uh, operated or electromechanically operated. They did block the payment system. So, and, and, and the colonial pipeline owner and operator decided to block delivery of gas because otherwise they wouldn't be able to count how much gas sure. would go through and they wouldn't be able to get paid. <laughs> so, but, but the indeed- It's very complex. You can get <laughs> it, uh, it uh, you know, from different angles. Yeah, but indeed, indeed, uh, the applications are, are, are the important part and um, uh, security of, of, of that. I, I, I would, if I if I had to, um, to 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 put my money on, we will see very little hijacking, very little um, um, problems related to the five G uh, standards, the five G infrastructure per se. Perhaps we will see something about the implementation of, of, of it, but not really uh, at the, the core of the standards, the, the, the algorithm for encryptions, uh, the way things are set up. But we will see more and more on the application side, on the device hijacking. Mm -hmm.
from from a security perspective that that would be my my sign so for me you know 5g well, welcome you know move forward <laughs> there's no stopping it but uh, in in that case is it possible that the uh slow adoption to be caused by security concerns that of the apps so that the the slow app development will somehow slow down the adoption of 5g or it it will be anyhow as i understood dragon uh there is no uh material cost it, it just the upgrade of the uh, uh stations it did i get it correctly yeah. on the infrastructure 5G. side it will be a physical the uh, it, the, the hardware physical digital and the radio platforms are changing So it's mm -hmm. not just a software upgrade. Yeah, there are kind of be uh, smaller changes between a release 15 to 16, 16 to 17, the 3GPP releases. But as we move from 3G to 4G, 4G to 5G, physical infrastructure equipment changes. And yeah, your devices will need to have different modems, different uh, radio front ends. So it's not uh, software. One of the uh -huh. big reasons for introducing new technology is because it brings about introduction of new silicon technology. It used to be 16 nanometers, then 10, then now we're, we're working on seven with it, uh, more efficiency power-wise. So it's not just software. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I read an, an interesting article uh, about an idea that Nikola Tesla envisioned like, you know, many years ago, uh, this wireless power transmission. And as I read, the 5G is using kind of a beam forming and uh, some people were able to deliver at given point in the space, which was in a near vicinity of the, that, uh, how do you call it, the, the cell, Help me out, Dragon. So how do you call these radio stations? Repeaters, no? Base stations, repeaters. Base station, right. So in the near vicinity of the base station, so they were able to power some sensors consuming, uh, I don't know, some milliwatts or so. Uh, so I think, so first of all, it sounds interesting. On the other hand, I'm not sure if technology-wise uh, we are there, and I'm quite confident that 5G is not meant for such a use case. But uh, going back, so is that something that might come with 6G? And the, that that's maybe the question to Dragon. And the question to Snežana, if we fit into time, is how that could influence people around the base stations. Is that a uh, science fiction or, or or there is something tangible? No, it's not a science fiction. The, this is not, as you said, an intended use of 5G. And energy-wise, it's pretty inefficient. However, the biggest problem is in order to achieve it, even at 10, 100, not to speak of 100 meter distances, You need a very high uh, uh, density of radio radiation, known as EIRP, which might be exceeding uh, safety limits, primarily hurting um, eye eyesight as kind of our electromagnetically open receptor. So I, I, I'm not an expert in the field, but uh, maybe Snyajana can tell us more but electromagnetic transmission of energy might be very problematic for those reasons. Uh, okay, thank you. Well, yes, no? uh, at first, uh, beamforming is uh, one way of uh, transmitting energy, uh, even during the ordinary transmission that we uh, transmit energy also. Uh, but uh, when in uh, uh, networks planning and networks deploying, uh, 
safety limits must be obeyed. So uh, that is one point and the, the test, uh, the, some user case that uh, is when, when the beamforming is used for just for the energy transmission, uh, I think that it's not not uh, not 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 not, not possible, but uh, it's not a good example. But I should say that uh, there is lots of um, uh, studies about energy harvesting in existing electromagnetic fields, uh, and that it's possible to 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 uh, power some sensors by by energy harvesting. Uh, in in 2G, 3G, 5G networks radiation. So we can use that energy which is in the air. Mm -hmm. Actually, my father told me a story that when they were, he's a physicist, uh, they were near some radio station, they can light up a bulb just by pulling a wire, use it as an antenna. Uh, but they, they got quite close to the radio station. Maybe, maybe too close. <laughs> maybe too close. TV transmission, so <laughs> which yeah. very high level of uh, transmit power. Yeah, radio, yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. I, and I, I'm looking at the time, so we have maybe a couple of minutes left. Uh, I would like to do a final round before we split apart. Uh, and I would like to hear from you, you know, is it IoT fulfilling its promise? And uh, do you see 5G as a, a necessary pillar to support IoT? So uh, shall we use the same order as we did the introduction? So we started with Snežana. Okay, well, um... I look at the 5G as great potential for development of some new uh, new businesses, new applications. Uh, uh, if we talk about uh, IoT uh, sense, uh, as camera as IoT sensor, we can uh, talk about uh, uh, 4K or 8K videos uh, transmitting by 5G. So. I'm optimistic about 5G. Okay, thank you. Maria. Uh, when it comes to the IoT, I am kind of more on this uh, infrastructural semi, uh, semi uh, industrial side of use of IoT. I think that that is what we really do need, like uh, the other uh, consumer applications probably are coming to the market in an easier way, but uh, we may be able to live without them in the future. Uh, so I see 5G and uh, as uh, one of the standardized uh, connectivity uh, methods for, for this uh, wide area uh, connectivity and uh, a platform that the future uh, Metropolitan area applications could be built on, mm -hmm. and maybe it's not a must, but mm -hmm. I guess it'll help. Okay, thank you. Let's move to US then, Dragon. Yeah, I I think um, IoT is and will be fulfilling its promise when, it, especially when it comes to industrial. Um, transportation systems. When it comes to consumer side, it might be happening slower than uh, mm -hmm. wished. Um, five, five G will be one of the connectivity options. Definitely not the only one. And over time, yes, it will start prevailing as a natural uh, kind of evolution from all these Gs, two G, three G, and re replacement with five G. Okay. I think I, I agree with what my uh, colleague has said before. So from, from a, a professional application, IoT is, um, is already there. You may not notice it, but it's there. And it will jump on the bandwagon of 5G. And is it necessary? No, no, no not, not for everything. 
but it will allow to, especially for smart cities application, it will allow to deploy at, at additional applications that we're not doing today. Yeah, yeah I'm also quite sure that, you know, they will, uh, or 5G will uh, open up the space for some new things to be done, because I am going back to the this sample of an edge device where, you know, the novelties 5G supposed to bring or, or brings would be beneficial, but at the time, you know, it, it, it was maybe too early to uh, to jump on that train. Uh, what I am seeing from the professional life is that, you know, uh, industrial is maybe moving a bit slower, but, you know, it has a steady space and direction. On the other hand, you know, in, in consumer, everybody, is calling everything IoT. So everything is IoT, although maybe it, it, it's not the real uh, uh, essence of IoT. And, uh, you know, there are other solutions that are, are IoT, but they are not hyped as IoT. So I, I am, you know, from the conceptual point of view, there is a huge variety of different things, whether they are called or not called, IoT, it is a bunch of devices working together to achieve a, a, a certain goal, and such solutions are here today. They were used like 10 or, or 20 years ago as well, and I strongly believe that 5G will give a boost for the apps or the, the use cases quite soon. So I, I'm also for it. As I said, I'm technologically biased. So let's go for it. Uh, okay. Uh, I think we we are about to finish this session. First of all, I need to say that I really enjoyed discussing with you. Uh, thank you for coming. And I really hope we will have some opportunities to proceed in the discussions. Thank you. Likewise, it was great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for inviting. Thank, thank you. Thank you all bye, for bye. a really inspiring discussion, Istvan. Uh, do you want to, to say a few additional words? Sorry. Uh, actually, I, I just did. I thanked two two friends participating, and uh, we we made a promise we will uh, repeat it sometime, maybe over a beer or so. And so this was this was a very very nice discussion because actually you you discuss the things and I think uh, that uh, uh, once this conference ends and we uh, have all the recordings at the disposal this would be a pearl of uh, let's say statement to the present day and uh, I I would I would see that we uh, have these kinds of uh, let's say checkups and syncs on different very important and very relevant topics each year so that we can then follow through and, and, and see a little bit how it all evolved and, and how the predictions uh, were fulfilled or not fulfilled, etc. So thank you very much. And uh, this, this uh, concludes this panel, um, this great panel. And uh, I would like to invite everyone uh, just after a short, uh, very short break that we are back here in the main room um, where we have the the continuation, uh, there is a, a paper session on image and video processing, uh, and in parallel, we are going to have uh, additional uh, Zing session in, in room A. So uh, please uh, enjoy the continuation of the program. Afterwards, uh, in, the, in the afternoon, we are going to have one very interesting keynote and two additional panels and the closing. And for the closing, we are preparing a surprise. It would be the selection of best paper. So we are going to have three best paper awards and three special merit awards that we reinstate in the Zinc Conference as per the tradition of Consumer Technology Society. Special merit award uh, basically means that uh, apart from being a very good uh, paper and presentation, it also brings a, uh, additional novelty and additional angle, so to say, to the field of consumer technology, and that we are happy to see the involvement of the technology in the future. So stay tuned for our selections of this year, best papers and special merit awards, and also for the rest of the program. Thank you.